One of North America's most unique treasures will be preserved forever. It's the only temperate climate rainforest in the world, on the west coast of Canada. A walk through the Elaho Valley reveals both faces of this unique rainforest. One is green and lush, where thousand-year-old trees tower above you and where there's wildlife in great abundance. The other is scarred, where trees have been cut and where wide sections of forest have been left bare and deserted. In the last three decades, conservationists have watched commercial logging companies intensify their activities here, using clear cutting practices to harvest massive quantities of cedar, spruce, and hemlock. This is the last large intact section of temperate rainforest in Western Canada, home to the mythical Kermode spirit bear. Grizzlies up there, there's wolves up there, there's cougars up there. And that means in a North American context, in a world context, that's a pretty special piece of real estate up there. Environmentalists have been fighting to protect that real estate, waging war against the logging companies, disrupting their business, and launching a global marketing campaign, urging consumers around the world to boycott timber taken from Canada. But now, these arch enemies have formed an unusual alliance. In an effort to put this matter to rest, British Columbia has announced the creation of the Great Bear Rainforest, a park that will cover millions of acres along the coast. Once the ancestral home to native tribes, the land has been compared to the Galapagos Islands because of its abundant wildlife and vegetation. Some believe that the massive boycott led by conservationists in the late 90s jump-started negotiations. Others, like logging industry representative Linda Cody, believe there was more to it than that. It wasn't just the campaign, you know. I mean, our customers don't, you know, phone up Greenpeace every morning to find out how to think. I mean, there has been a shift in values uh, around environmental issues globally and locally. After years of tense discussions, a compromise was reached between environmental organizations, the logging industry, the native tribes, and the government. Under the agreement, the 4.4 million acre park is under federal protection. In addition, 10 million acres of land is overseen by a committee set with the task of keeping a balance between logging, mining, and native interests. In the end, the total amount of protected land could come to 21 million acres, an area almost 10 times the size of Yellowstone National Park. Some activities may be possible in some areas in the Great Bear, um, but we won't see large-scale development, we won't see clear-cutting that strips bare the mountainsides. We'll see a much lighter footprint on the Earth. 